Allah, the Prophet ﷺ in another hadith says, Inna Allah yuhibbu an yara athara ni'matihi ala abdih. Indeed, Allah loves to see the consequences and the sh Allah loves to see how his blessings show on his servants. So the gifts that you have been given, whether they are talents, latent talents, or a natural gift to do something, or a skill, or a personal strength, or anything special about you, it's not random. Allah did not throw gifts and talents and skills and, th and strengths randomly just like that. Allah doesn't do anything random. He's Al-Hakim. He puts everything in its right place. So the set of skills and gifts and blessings and orientations and strengths that you have as a human being, they are meant for a reason. They are treasures that Allah puts within you. And most of us don't bother discovering these treasures, looking into them. You are supposed to look into yourself and see what Allah has given you. See what Allah has put inside you. So you can use these gifts. You can use these gifts. There is so much potential in every human being. There is so much potential. And when you do not turn to that, you know, when you do not turn your attention to these, this potential and these gifts, you live in denial. You live in denial to what Allah has given you. If I gave you some kind of perfume, you put it on the shelf and you never look at it. I won't feel good about it. I won't feel good about it. You don't appreciate my gift. You don't even give attention to it. You don't appreciate it. You don't value my good gesture. I as a human being would feel offended. What about the gifts that Allah has given you? And you never bothered looking into them. We think it's some kind of waste. Or we think it's not even manly to look into what Allah has given you. Where is all this nonsense came to us from? And some people have the guts to call this Islam. Some people have the guts to call this Islam. So in order to be grateful, in order to be thankful to Allah and live your life in gratitude and thankfulness to Allah, the first step is to turn into yourself and see what Allah has put in you that you need to be grateful for. And the way you are grateful to these things is that by acknowledging them, recognizing them, Embracing them, appreciating them, recognizing their value and what you can do with them and their potential. Then you decide to use this in a goodly cause. Providing for a family, raising your children, helping the needy, helping people in the streets, helping the youth take them out of drugs and gangs and drinking and all that stuff. Showing them something constructive to do about their life. Helping people who have any kind of need, any kind of discomfort or disadvantage in their life, there is something inside you that you can offer to them. Use it. And that's how you live in gratitude. And gratitude is never ever a luxury. Because when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, Allah will ask you about everything. Everything He has given you, you will be asked about it. The Prophet sallallahu <clears throat> When he ate one day with Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum, another companion had invited them. When they ate, it was just a little bit of meat. They ate, the Prophet says, وَلَا تُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ You shall be asked about this luxury, about these blessings from Allah. Just a piece of meat the Prophet ate. So don't you think Allah is going to ask you about a gift, about a talent that He put inside you and you turned away from it. You lived in negligence to it. Completely ignored it when other people used it and made a difference in the world. It's not a luxury, it's a must. And if you do not respond, if you do not turn to Allah's gift, gifts and appreciate them and use them in a goodly cause, in a beneficial cause, you'll be turning to Allah in a state of ungratefulness. Ungratefulness and denial. And Allah will ask you on the day of, of judgment. Allah will ask you about every minute in your life. And Allah will ask you about everything He gave you and He put inside you. Why didn't you turn to it? Why didn't you appreciate it? When you live your life thinking that Allah has gi hasn't given you, but has given all of those successful people, you live in denial to Allah. As much Allah has given them, He has given you. But you have failed to look into yourself, to appreciate what Allah has given you and realize its full potential and make that potential a reality. That's the whole thing. And that's the whole story.
Don't blame Allah. Don't blame circumstances. Every human being has a potential. You can make a difference in your own way unless you live in denial. But we live in denial, then we blame it on Allah. We blame it on governments. We blame it on circumstances. We blame it on spouses. We blame it on relatives. We blame it on people who envy us, on the evil eye, on magic. And we play victim all, all our lives. And we will wake up only the moment the angels come to drag your soul out of your body. It will be too late by then. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Other than standing in the presence or before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and being asked about everything you were given in this life, did you acknowledge it? Did you recognize it? Did you embrace it? Did you use it? Did you benefit others with it? Apart from this, there is a very important consequence to lack of gratitude. That takes place in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And your Lord declared, He made it a clear declaration that if you are grateful, if you are thankful to Allah, He will increase you. He will increase you. وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ But if you live in denial, in denial to the blessings of Allah, then the punishment of Allah is severe in this world and in the next. What clarifies this is another verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. The majority of the Mufassirin, they say, the meaning of this verse, Allah will not take away a blessing that He has bestowed upon a people until they change something within themselves that makes them act in denial to Allah. So if we have a blessing, Allah will not take it away unless we have changed something serious within ourselves and that's an evil kind of change. And looking at us Muslims living in the West these days, previously Muslims had so much freedom. So much freedom. A lot, of, a lot of us came from other countries where we suffered from lack of freedom, from challenging circumstances financially, politically, socially, etc. Even professionally. So a lot of people came for a better life, a better prospect of life here. But it seems a lot of Muslims did not appreciate it. We brought some of the dogmatic thoughts, some of the authoritative way of forcing things on people. We did not appreciate the gifts of freedom that, w that we managed, that we managed to tap into in these countries. We didn't use it for a good cause. We didn't use it for a good cause. A lot of people came here and they kept the knowledge of Islam that they had away from the people in an attempt to protect themselves. When the people needed it badly, when people at a time were open to it and they were willing, they were receptive and they were willing to accept it. And alhamdulillah, we still have lots of freedom. We still have lots of space. We still have lots of mediums where you can spread the truth and you can share the truth. Not necessarily by preaching, but by simply being a good Muslim. By simply being a good Muslim and not even showing because it would show the nature of goodness is that it shows by itself and it inspires. It's a spark that connects to the soul and awakens it. And if we do not use this freedom and this space and any kind of advantage that we Muslims have in these countries, unless we use them wisely, for a good cause and for a good reason, they will not last for long. And we are seeing the early signs of this. We are seeing the early signs of this. Blame no one but yourself, as individuals and as an ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a rule that he does not change a blessing that he has on people until they have changed something within themselves. So we need to live in gratitude. The way to make it practical is to look around at your life. You don't need to change the ummah. All you need to do is look after yourself. Start living your life, make your lifestyle based on gratitude. You don't need to change so many things in your life. Just change your frame of reference. Change the way you look at your life. You go to work, don't do that out of a sense of obligation. It is there. The obligation is there, but keep it in the background. Do it as gratitude to Allah. Oh Allah, thank you for giving me this family. As a sign of appreciation and acknowledgement and gratitude to you, I will look after them. So I will provide for them and I will work hard for them. 
I will educate them and I will cultiv cultivate them in the best of ways out of gratitude to, to you. So you Allah, see how, how appreciative I am. Allah has given you an easy life, a little bit of space, a little bit of luxury when it comes to financial situation. Use it to help out someone who's in need. And don't do it just out of obligation. Don't do it just out of maybe Allah will give me more. That's still good. But you can take your game to the next level by saying, Oh Allah, I appreciate it. I had, I went through times in my life when it was very difficult. And now, Oh Allah, you have bestowed upon me ease, financial ease. I want you to know that I appreciate it. And because of that, I'm going to help your servants. I want to see someone who's in need, who's in a situation like I used to be in before. I want to help them out for your sake, oh Allah, just to show you my gratitude. Please accept it from me. Just do it like this. When you eat, instead of eating out of desire, just look at that food as a gift from Allah. Look at your body as a gift from Allah that you need to look after and sustain. Turn to Allah say, oh Allah, thank you for this beautiful body. Thank you for putting in me that ability to taste and experience food in that way. I want to eat, and I want to experience that gift from you, and I want to show my appreciation, just in enjoying it, for you or Allah alone. I will wear my clothes because I need to look after my body, because that's the gift of Allah. I want to look after my body. I'm going to dress it up even nicely. I'm going to dress it up even nicely. The Prophet ﷺ used to love good clothes. That's part of the zina, beautification that we Muslims are supposed to have. When you sleep at night, don't sleep like a log. Don't just go to bed because you are completely tired. Turn to Allah and say, Allah, thank you for creating this wonderful, beautiful machine. That is my body. It helps me go through the day and do so many things, so many great things. I can do physical things. I can do intellectual things. I have feelings. I can experience things at different levels. Such a beautiful experience. Thank you for this beautiful body. I appreciate it. And I want you to know that I appreciate it and I love it. I'm going to look after it. And I will give it the rest that it needs. Because I appreciate it. It's your gift. I will look after it. And I want you to know that I will look after it. It's your trust until the time comes that I return it back to you. As simple as that. You can look at everything you do. When you are studying, when you are reading, look at the intellectual gift that Allah has given you, the ability to grasp information, decipher principles and ideas and relate to them, and create a mind map about them, and be able to relate to life. All of this beauty within you, thank Allah for it. So when you read, oh Allah, I'm going to nourish my mind, I'm going to learn more every day. I'm going to expand this beautiful, this beautiful gift that you have given me, and I want to reach with it the full potential, and I want to use it for something good. You have social ability, use it, appreciate it as a gift from Allah, expand it, take courses, take workshops, Read books, take courses and develop yourself for the sake of doing something good. You have some kind of political ability and influence, go ahead and use it. You have skills in sports and any kind of athletic endeavor. Develop that within yourself and use it for a good cause. The, the world is an open field of gratitude where you can use it and get closer to Allah. And everything, that small twist will make your life more meaningful will connect you to Allah in everything you do. So you stop that robotic routine way of approaching things. Your work becomes an act of worship. Your, the time you spend with your kids becomes an act of worship. The way you're dressing up becomes an act of worship. Combing your hair becomes an act of worship. It's beautiful and sweet and lovely. And it assumes beautiful meaning. It's just by being grateful to Allah. Just by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, Thank you, oh Allah, I know, acknowledge everything is from you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I want to just be good to your gifts and use them in a good way. In the dua during the khutbah, the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, there is no authentic narration at all that they raise their hands in Jum'ah, during the khutbah. That's specific to the khutbah. So what I, my advice would be, make the dua in your heart and you can say Ameen and feel the link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you do not have to raise your hands. That's closer to the way of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات <تصفيق> اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم كن للمستضعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان اللهم احقن دماءهم اللهم صن أعراضهم اللهم احفظ عليهم دينهم وإيمانهم 
اللهم ابرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويذل فيه أهل معصيتك اللهم عدي شباب المسلمين ورد ضال لهم إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتاهم وتقبل شهداءهم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين